The Chicago White Sox had their game on Wednesday postponed. It will be made up as part of a double header on Thursday. White Sox slugger Luis Robert Jr. will not only be representing the White Sox in the All-Star game in Seattle next week, but he will also be participating in the Home Run Derby. Sox have not had a representative in the Derby since 2016. Rick Hahn was non-committal once again in his latest comments, and his wording was odd even for Rick Hahn. Ozzy Gian weighed in on what's been happening as the White Sox crawl to the break. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome back to Lockdown White Sox. Thank you for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Lockdown White Sox. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper, a swing for the fences on Sleeper picks, and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKED ON, and you'll get uh, up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details currently. Operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, it's a doubleheader on Thursday as the White Sox take on the Toronto Blue Jays on the south side, catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. Uh, state of the Sox, uh, they are 37 and 50, seven games back in the AL Central. Uh, good to be back with you. Hey, when I left uh, way back when, as I took off for vacation, uh, White Sox were four and a half games back. Uh, they beat the Angels. And, uh, you know, you got Oakland here. Uh, granted, in Oakland, but maybe you take care of business and uh, things go your way at the top of the division. You pick up a couple games, and, and that did not work out. Uh, Sox are... Uh, one of the six teams in all of baseball uh, to make it a 50 losses before the break. Uh, so game was, of course, postponed on Wednesday. Some horrible storms uh, ripped through here uh, in Chicago, as I'm sure they did in a lot of areas of Chicago land. Uh, Double headers set for Thursday uh, with the first game. Uh, set to start at 4.10 local time. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Lance Lynn later in this episode. He'll be game one uh, starter. Uh, so, you know, I was away for a little bit. And, uh, you know, boy, I, I followed the White Sox as much as I possibly could. Uh, listened to several games. Uh, did catch uh, one of the, I guess I caught the first game of the Blue Jays uh, series on 4th of July Caught that on the uh, NBC Sports Chicago app. Kind of followed the Oakland series as best as possible. I, I was just shocked. Uh, I was shocked what happened in Oakland. Uh, again, I, I know it's a very difficult place to play, but come on. Uh, after that win against the Angels and, and knowing what they absolutely have to do, uh, this White Sox team, it, it was just inexcusable. A really, really sickening. Uh, disgusting stuff, but again, you know, it's Oakland. I guess you could, that's what you can chalk it up to. Sox play horrible in Oakland, but that shouldn't be the case this year. And that you could say that about a lot of things that have been happening for our Chicago White Sox. So that was, uh, that was not good to, to follow at all. A uh, great stuff with uh, Luis Robert Jr., though. That's really been the, the highlight as of late. I mean, he has been 
Mr. Danger, the guy I talked about, along with Aloy Jimenez, uh, who I have enjoyed seeing what he's been doing, you know, swinging the bat, uh, hasn't had the home runs like Luis Robert Jr., but uh, he's on a tear. Robert Jr. is on an absolute uh, tear right now. And, you know, Jake Berger, will he make it to the all-star team? Uh, you know, remember, remember that, remember a couple weeks ago, it feels like forever ago where it was like, get Berger to Seattle. Uh, he is had just an unbelievable story. Look what he's doing offensively. Uh, you know, he, every swing is uh, just about a home run. Uh, boy, this guy has been putting in the work and it is showing, uh, you know, you just don't, you don't talk about Jake Berger much anymore. Uh, it's all Luis Robert Jr. And, you know, of course we thought, you know, well, he could easily start, you know, he could be a starter in the all-star game, but you know how voting goes and, and it's such a popularity contest, which, you know, I want to get to the whole home run derby stuff in a little bit, but, you know, he's going to be representing the all, uh, the White Sox in the all-star game uh, in Seattle. And he's also decided to participate uh, in the home run derby, just found out about that. Uh, on Wednesday, which is pretty exciting stuff. So the last White Sox outfielder uh, just to play uh, in the All-Star game was Avi Garcia in 2017. Uh, last White Sox player to start in the outfield, okay, start in the outfield for the All-Star game, Richie Zisk, 1977, the Southside Hitmen. Uh, and last time, a White Sox player uh, started in center field for the All-Star game. It was Thurman Tucker back in 1944. So uh, the White Sox clearly have not had a lot of representation out in the outfield uh, throughout their history. And uh, again, Robert won't be starting, but he will be there. Hopefully he gets some decent playing time. But uh, this home run derby participation, uh, that is huge. And, you know, he uh, talked about how he wasn't going to do this. I, I remember the, some of the quotes uh, not too long ago. He, he thought that it might hurt his swing. Uh, maybe he would get injured. Uh, he was going to pass on this. And then it was the whole, well, maybe Jake Berger will. And Berger was like, yeah, please, just ask me. And I'm all in. Uh, so what changed? Uh, what changed his mind? You know, in my personal opinion, and I don't think it's that big of a stretch, uh, Luis Robert Jr. is absolutely white hot. I mean, he is one of the hottest things going in all of baseball. And I think he realizes, look, and, and, and people around him, whoever he's got his representation and the people that he trusts probably said, hey, this is time for you to showcase your talents on the big stage. Uh, the White Sox are going nowhere. Uh, and this guy has an opportunity to show the world uh, what he can do. You know, the Sox aren't going to get a lot of national attention. They're not going to get national games. And the way they're going, you, you're just not going to see them at all, of course, uh, in the postseason, despite what Rick Hahn wants you to believe, which we'll get there in a little bit. Uh, so this is Robert Jr.'s time. This is his time to put on a show. He was there in the World Baseball Classic. Uh, and, you know, you got to strike while the iron's hot, build his brand, and I think he kind of realized that like, yeah, you know, why not? I mean, uh, he's 25 years old, ranked second uh, in the American League and tied for third overall in baseball with a career high 25 home runs, uh, trailing only Shohei Otani uh, in the American League. Uh, Luis Robert Jr., he drew a one seed. So they had all this pairings played out uh, on Wednesday. And uh, you can look at the bracket, I'm sure. Uh, on ESPN or in a variety of different places. But uh, Robert Jr. drew a one seed and will face Adley Rushman of Baltimore. I believe he's an eight seed. Uh, that's going to be an interesting matchup. I, I, you know, Robert might just go on a run. I mean, he, he could potentially win this thing. I mean, that's how dangerous he is. It's going to just be fun to watch. Todd Frazier uh, was the most recent White Sox player uh, to take part in the Derby, losing in the finals to uh, Giancarlo Stanton uh, at Petco Park in 2016. This is what Robert had to say uh, about the Derby and deciding uh, to participate. I won't try to pull every single ball because that can create some issues. Uh, I'm just going to go out there and have fun. Hopefully I can do a good job and maybe win. Uh, but my main goal is to go out and have fun. 
Uh, Grafal said Robert's personality is just be who he is, stay calm, take the same swing. Uh, you very rarely see him overswing in a game, uh, no matter the counts, Grafal said. I was actually talking about that yesterday with some of our hitting guys. It doesn't matter whether he's 0 2 or 3 0, it's almost the same swing, the same effort level. Uh, so I am anticipating that doesn't change. He might uh, be a little pumped about it, uh, but I don't think his swing is going to change. I'm not too concerned about it, but he's a big part of this team. Uh, we need him to come back healthy and ready to go for the second half. Now, uh, that was Pedro Grafol. Unless you throw him a slider or something nasty in the dirt, which obviously is not going to be the case uh, in the home run derby. Uh, a, a repeatable swing, uh, conserve your energy, all that good stuff. There's all these different new rules that have been put into place uh, with the home run derby and guidelines over the last several years. Uh, but I'm excited to watch it. You know, again, I, I think he sees Robert Jr. sees where this White Sox team is. And he's like, you know what? I'm not getting any national attention with this team. I'm going to do it myself. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe he's got some countrymen, you know, that are also going to be participating. It'll be a fun little competition. But uh a good a good thing to watch. Looking forward to Luis Robert Jr. Uh, not only in the All Star Game but now in the Derby. Uh, October baseball uh, is the goal, of course, but it definitely does not feel like a reality and hasn't for quite some time. Uh, but Rick Hahn had thoughts and he did his best job at spinning things. Uh, more on that uh, in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Uh, Sleeper is a fantasy sports and a real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. Uh, Sleeper has become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world uh, while earning some of the highest levels of engagement per user in the industry. At Sleeper, it's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memories. Uh, Sleeper Picks is our Real money product that connects friends over picks. Choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, uh, live, or even across uh, different sports. Pick higher or lower than the predicted stats. Only on Sleeper can you get up to a 100 times payouts. Uh, share with your friends and get rewarded together. Uh, use promo code Locked On and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's Terms of Use for details. Uh, currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. The White Sox face off against the Blue Jays twice on Thursday. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. So it's a little bit of old news, I guess, but... Uh, new for me to talk about it. Uh, you know, one of my favorite things is when Rick Hahn opens up his mouth and speaks uh, before a home stand. It, it doesn't happen all the time, but it did on 4th of July uh, before that Blue Jays start. And, uh, you know, he's always got something and it's probably not going to change. You know, he's trying to sell a product, of course, and uh, appeal to the fans and, and season ticket holders and folks that are still interested in coming out to watch this ball club. Um, but he, here we go. This is uh, what Han had to say. If you didn't see it, uh, I'd love to talk about this. Uh, this is what he said on Tuesday. It's good to see the commitment and the work we have done since May 1st, but we still have a fair amount of work to do ahead of us yet. Uh, Han told reporters, we have won a decent amount of series since May 1st, but it hasn't proved to be enough yet. I am not going to put a marker in the sand saying we have to rattle off 10 of the next 14 wins at the same time. We can see the calendar and we can see how many games we are back. Uh, you want to have a reason to believe this thing is going to get right between now and August 1st. Obviously, we have big decisions to make before the end of this month. I have heard from players directly and indirectly uh, through manager Pedro Grafol and the coaches. Their focus is to get things right here. Uh, their goal is to win the division and do damage in the postseason. Uh, nobody in baseball ops is going to say anything to take away from that 
focus. We will continue to support our guys who want to get things right. Uh, we might eventually be on track to win a division, but our goals have always been higher, Han said. I think if we manage to win the division, it will be the result of us going on a stretch of playing some pretty good baseball. That, in turn, would give us the confidence we can do some damage in October. Uh, but again, that first thing must happen. We must. Uh, we have to have a half of season to do it, but we must make a decision in the next month. In the end, we're going to make a decision about what is best for the long-term health of the organization with obviously the priority being placed on the here and now because this is the only year we can control. Ultimately, if you're overwhelmed by a potential return that may tilt your balance more toward the future than the present, if you don't play at a certain level, uh, that might tilt your focus more toward the future than the present. Um, Rick Hahn speak, uh, some interesting stuff. Do damage in October. It's fascinating. You know, it's a, it's a tough job to go out there and just completely, I think, in a lot of ways, just lie through your teeth. I mean, you got to say things that you know are not true, uh, but you have to spin it. Uh, you've got to come out there and try to put some sort of positive spin on things. Uh, he can't believe that. And, and you know, I look, it, the division is forgiving, but the way the Sox have been playing, not a chance right now. Absolutely not a chance. Uh, he talked about commitment, uh, the team's commitment since May 1st, uh, and he seemed to be really excited about that, of what's been happening since May 1st. Sacks have been 28 and 27, if my math is correct. 28 and 27. You excited about that? Uh, one game over? I guess that's better than 13 games under, but uh, in a championship window and in a contention window, that, that shouldn't be the case. Uh, eight series wins out of 18 possible. So Han went on to say a decent amount. Okay. Again, it's how you spin it. Eight series, the Sox have win one out of 18 possible since May 1st. Uh, you know, he's a spinster, constantly spinning things. Uh, and, and I think Rick Han will continue to say similar things because, you know, tickets need to be sold. A product is being peddled. Uh, but also because he can lie. He can absolutely lie through his teeth and nothing will happen to him. There is no accountability. I mean, he's a made man. And, and the reason why I believe that, and I've mentioned it before on this on this podcast, is if he if there was if there was expectations, different expectations placed on him by Jerry, he'd been gone already. Kenny would have been gone, Rick would have been gone. So you got to think about, well, well, who's above Rick Hahn? Who's his boss? And when you look at Jerry Reinsdorf, it's like, well, what, what does Jerry really expect from this White Sox team? Not just now, as we as we kickstart uh, July and head into the All-Star break soon, but in general, what does he really expect from the Chicago White Sox? And I really don't think he expects uh, very much. Be somewhat competitive, give people hope. You know, I, I don't. I'm not. You're, I'm not looking for miracles right now. I got my one World Series, so I'm fine. This team keeps making money. Uh, I'm good. And if that's all that Han needs to do, well, then Jerry's not going to be upset. You know, so Han's out here giving up this. You know, this lip service really for fans. You know, to to have something to still believe in. And I just can't believe anything that Han says anymore. And I don't even think Han really believes in it. You know, in the products there, they are what they are. They're 37 and 50. And I haven't seen any real improvement at all uh, this season. Uh, so on my on my trip, when I went away for a few days, uh, family and I, we went up to uh, Galena, uh, like the Eagle Ridge Resort area up in the north uh, west area uh, of the state. Uh, beautiful up there, really in, able to relax. A lot of great stuff to do. And, you know, anywhere I go, I'm, I'm always meeting Sox fans, as I'm sure you are, too. You know, I got my Sox hat or Sox shirt on or whatever it may be. And, and you have small talk with other White Sox fans, because when you find a White Sox fan somewhere out in the wild outside of the Chicagoland area, it's kind of rare. So you want to connect. And, and, and this particular fan just, you know, we started some small talk about the injuries and, you know, where the Sox are right now and the underperforming of players and you know, Pedro Grafol and, 
you know, surface stuff. And, and then we got into a couple other things and, uh, you know, what the future might look like for this team, you know, in, in 2023 after the All-Star break and what the division is like. And, you know, this uh, this fellow fan, which I'm really glad he said this because this is where a lot of these uh, conversations go to. He said, you know, nothing is going to change really until they completely get the front office. And I was like, thank you. Bingo. Absolutely. Uh, bingo. You know, we could try to change the, bring Coloss back and, you know, shift the lineup around and Ben attendee at the one spot. And that's great and all. And then maybe, maybe they do catch fire or, or, you know, I don't know, maybe Robert Jr. Puts them on their back. Uh, but truly nothing seriously will change with this organization uh, until the front office is gone. And really in my mind, until Jerry sells or, or, you know, whatever that may be. So uh, again, very funny. I, I thought it was just like, perfect. This is, uh, this is usually how it goes. We have this conversation and then the end it's like, well, nothing's really going to change until the front office changes. Uh, Ozzy was on the score on Wednesday morning, uh, 670 and, uh, White Sox with a 425 winning percentage is the sixth worst mark in all of baseball. And it has uh, left NBC Sports Chicago analyst Ozzy Gian crazy, he said on the Mully and Haw show on Wednesday morning. Uh, they don't show anyone what kind of ball club they are, what we can expect, what we think. Uh, Gian said it's kind of sad with this talent to see what they are, uh, what they do uh, to – on the ways they do to find lose uh, one pitch away, one hit away, wild pitch. Uh, they've been losing so many crazy games that you don't know what to expect. Uh, and he's right on. And, and the sad part, it's really sad. It, it's pathetic what has happened with this collection of talent. Uh, and you don't know what to expect, but always remember uh, what our fearless leader Rick Hahn said last off season. It's the players who play the game and when they don't achieve at the level we've projected, they certainly bear a level of responsibility for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, the people who put the players on the roster, put them on the field, are the ones who bear the responsibility. If that group doesn't achieve, that's me. The White Sox will play two on Thursday. Hopefully the starters uh, can eat some innings. Uh, more on that in a moment. Double header on the south side, Blue Jays, White Sox on Thursday. Uh, game one, I believe 4 10 uh, local time. Lance Lynn will be on the hill for the first one. I, I haven't seen, as of this recording, I haven't seen an announcement for the uh, game two starter as of yet. Uh, Lance Lynn has a two and four record with an ERA of 4.58 and 55 strikeouts in 11 appearances against the Blue Jays in his career. Uh, Lynn allowed four runs on five hits with three walks and four strikeouts in five innings against the Blue Jays back on April 24th. Uh, he was charged with the loss. Uh, Lynn has a five and eight record with an ERA of 6.47 and 116 strikeouts in 17 appearances this season. Uh, last time we saw Lynn, uh, he it was against the Angels last week. He went six innings. Uh, gave up eight hits, five earned runs, three home runs, a couple of walks, and seven strikeouts. This is what Lynn had to say after that start. I made three mistakes, and all three left the ballpark. Uh, usually that doesn't happen, but today uh, often scored runs, and it didn't kill us. I'll take it. Uh, wasn't what you want. You want a clean line, but we scored enough runs, and I was able to go deep enough for the bullpen not to have to cover too many innings. So it was good. And, of course, that game was uh, the 9-7 game against the Angels. Do the White Sox have nine runs uh, in them uh, on uh, on Thursday in game one? I don't know. The, the Toronto Blue Jays, they've got a tough lineup. You, you saw it on Tuesday, and we've seen it over the last couple of years. Uh, Vlad Guerrero with Merrifield. Uh, they, they've got some guys that can hit. They just don't go away. And uh, – when you throw hangers, middle, middle stuff, they will hit your mistake. So uh, can't let uh, Toronto Blue Jays beat you. Some of the guys that uh, will, will traditionally beat you, like a Vlad Jr., which happened on Tuesday, uh, got to watch out for some of these guys. Lynn can't hang that that cutter of his, just let it float over the zone uh, like he got into trouble with 
uh, earlier this year. So we'll see what kind of Lance Lynn we have. If he cleans up uh, some of those mistakes, uh, has a clean line, and, and can go deep in the game to help out the bullpen with this doubleheader on Thursday. Uh, folks, thank you so very much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere. Uh, you find your podcast. Uh, we're on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and any questions or comments you have, uh, get them into LockedOnSox at gmail.com. White Sox take on the Blue Jays on Thursday. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen every day. Hey, every dayers, you know how you who you are. Thank you so very much for uh, coming back and being patient while I was on uh, a vacation. On the next episode, I will recap uh, the double header. Hopefully. Be talking about a White Sox sweep. Appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.